And uh, I'm going to have uh, Kathy Ware to come up. She's the director of the uh, Department of Children and Family Services. Um, uh, this is a, um, a department that is, um, is always underfunded, a department that um, has an impossible task, uh, one that has to uh, make incredible decisions and uh, deal with an enormous workload when you talk about the number of children, unfortunately, that are abused in our community. And uh, much of that abuse stems from domestic violence. And so I'd like to have uh, Kathy come up and, and also thank her for always being a partner with us. Thank you, Chief Dyer. I appreciate this opportunity. We were, um, we were really appreciative of being part of yesterday's operation. We have had an ongoing um, partnership with the Fresno City PD, with our probation and our parole, and it's been a very positive one. You know, our wish always is that we're able to do preventative work. Oftentimes the phone calls that my department receives are in response to a child being hurt. Um, after the fact, we go out and have to make the decisions that Chief Jire just talked about. But to be able to be there to do some preventative work is really important. Uh, I was relieved last night to hear that we only had to pick up one child, but I am well aware that that was the day of circumstances, and on any given day, if we did this operation again, the number could have been much higher. Our department has had a um, serious increase of re referrals to our department since January, very much mirroring the statistics that Chief Dyer gave out since January. You know, we have our, you know, we have our own reasons for thinking that it is what it is based on, but the fact being, we've almost doubled our referrals coming in and the responses we are having to make. Uh, probably about 85% of the referrals that we become involved in, there are, is some type of substance abuse and domestic violence, probably well over half. Or they have a history of domestic violence. So it's a very serious problem for us. The other thing that I think it's important to note is that when you have an incident of domestic violence between partners, very often there is child abuse in that home as well because that is how people respond to their anger and their frustration. They take it out on those that are closest to them. Children are victims in this process. And if they were never physically touched, the emotional abuse of seeing partners, parents, or loved ones uh, get involved in domestic violence disputes, you can't even imagine the toll that takes on children. And Chief Dyer is right, it does become a learned behavior, and we have many cases where we're dealing with parents who were victims of that as a child. So I appreciate being part of it, and we will always continue to cooperate to be part of these endeavors. Thank you. Okay, well, we, uh, we are hopeful that uh, that operations such as these send a very significant message to those individuals in our community that are involved in domestic violence relationships. Uh, we want the message to be sent to the victims, uh, that we take those crimes very seriously, and we want to do everything we can to remove that individual, that violator, from the home, and also to continue with our partnership with Marjorie Mason Center and try to find a, a shelter um, for that abused victim. Because many, in many, many cases, uh, what we are finding is the victim um, does not feel that they have an avenue to escape. They do not feel that they have a place in which they can get shelter and be, prepared and, and be safe. And unfortunately, um, many of the kids, as a result of the decision of that victim, um, have to stay in that environment as well. And we want uh, a message to also be sent to those individuals that are out there committing acts of uh, child abuse or domestic violence, uh, that we will not tolerate that. And we will continue with these types of operations, and we will do everything within our power to arrest those individuals and to uh, place them in jail where they belong. And with that, we'll open it up for any questions that you might have. Chief, you announced 35 felony arrests. What were they? What were the felonies? What were they arrested for? The uh, the charges, uh, felony charges for domestic violence. Um, individuals that are uh, committing serious violent crimes against um, the person which they're cohabitating with, their spouse. I mean, you didn't see them doing this when you went to their homes. Right. We, we have a, uh, and I'm going to have Sergeant Trowball come up and talk a little bit about this. We have a sergeant and ten investigators uh, assigned to our domestic violence unit. They investigate cases of domestic violence. And in many cases, when we respond out in patrol, a, the, the suspect is no longer there. And so we have to conduct that investigation and then uh, either have an open charge for that person being arrested 
or seek out a warrant for their arrest. And that's what many of these cases are for. Or individuals that had simply gone through the court process, were on probation, were on parole, and as a result violated a condition of their parole or probation, which constitutes a felony charge. So. As the Chief said, the increase of the domestic violence uh, has been very difficult to handle and I think we're very fortunate to be able to address those needs by our partnership in going out on operations like this in order to prevent further victim violence by taking these folks who have already offended domestic violence wise out of the homes, protecting the victim, both adult and children. And by the detectives work in finding the location where the perpetrator may be hiding has allowed us to go out and arrest those who currently have open charges by working with probation and parole on those high-risk offenders who may not be in compliance who need those checks to make sure that they are complying and do not go back out and uh, reoffend. and that's basically what our goal was to apprehend those who are still wanted and make sure those who have gone through the court press process are uh, maintaining those conditions that they were set by the courts. Okay, any other questions? Of the arrests you made, Chief, do you know how many <coughs> perpetrators were found with the victims? Uh, I do not have that. Does anybody have that data? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. I, I, I do not know. Um, what I do know, though, is that it, it would be nice to think that Individuals get, get arrested for domestic violence will never reoffend. Unfortunately, we know that there is a high reoffender rate in the crime of domestic violence. People generally do not abuse their, their spouse one time or the person in which they're living with. It is some, a crime that continually occurs over and over again. And unfortunately, it's also a crime uh, that is underreported. Perhaps one of the most underreported crimes there are, there are is domestic violence. Now, that has changed significantly over the years um, because of law enforcement's response in the criminal justice system. Uh, unfortunately, victims of domestic violence uh, used to be victimized twice, once by their violator and the second time through the process, the, the, the court process. Uh, but that is no longer the case. And, but it is still an underreported crime and a crime that uh, needs to be continually taken serious by all of our community. Chief, do you know how many of the arrests might have been women? Uh, were there any? I believe there was one. one. One female arrest. So that's not to say that females uh, are not involved in domestic violence, but the vast majority of the cases we see, um, the, the violator is a male. Okay. And Jeff has some, uh, some video, I think. Yes, I've already handed it out to him. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your work.